Hi everybody, if you're like me and you've got yourself a DJI drone and a remote controller 3 but you'd much rather fly with inverted pitch controls then this is the video for you. Unfortunately DJI doesn't let you make that change in the software even in mode 2 so the only real option is to get hands on and do a little bit of internal tweaking. This process will void your warranty with DJI so only continue if you're okay with that and if you're unsure about opening up the controller I do cover that in this video but I'd also really recommend checking out a couple of videos first. The first one is from Mads Tech. They tear down the remote controller 3 and that gives you a great look at what's inside so you know what to expect. The second is by Infinity Drones and it's actually the same mod that we're doing today just from a slightly different perspective. Both of those videos are linked in the description below so go have a look at those if you haven't already and when you are ready let's get stuck in. In order to get through this process, you're going to need some tools. There's nothing too specialist, but definitely the kind of stuff you want ready before you start. You're going to need a couple of precision Phillips screwdrivers. Size 0 and size 1 will do the job. I believe that's 3 mil and 4 mil. You'll need some long nose pliers, some tweezers, some plastic prying tools. You'll need a hair dryer or a heat gun, although I recommend sticking with a hair dryer as a heat gun can be quite aggressive for what we need it for. And you'll need a black marker pen as well. So step one is getting the stick holders out. We start off with the rubberized stick holders on the inside of the controller handles. They're pretty well stuck in, but if you gently work them out using a plastic pry tool or even the screwdriver, they'll eventually give. Don't go jabbing at them too hard. It's pretty easy to pierce them with your screwdriver. Step two is to remove the top cover. The plastic cover at the top of the controller looks like it might be an antenna, but it's not. It's just a neat little panel that hides the seam between the upper and the lower shell. Pop that off and set it aside. Step three is taking out the grip screws. Gently pry back the rubber hand grips and you'll see two screws on either side, one at the top and one at the bottom. Grab your number one Phillips screwdriver and carefully unscrew them. There are four in total. Those screws are what's holding the shell together and once you've got those out, keep them all in a separate pile to the side. Step four is to open up the controller. So with the screws out, we're ready to separate it. There are two clips just under where the top plastic cover was. You can use tweezers or a small tool just to release them. Once those are undone, gently work your way around the edges with your prying tools. Take your time here. It can be a bit fiddly, but it will come apart without forcing it so you don't need to aggressively rip it apart. Step five is to remove your sticks. So if you haven't already, now's a good time. You'll see that I haven't yet. Those sticks are just gonna get in the way as we go deeper into the controller. So it's best to remove them now. Step six is to find the wiring clip and undo it. So now that we're inside the controller, turn your attention to the left-hand side of the controller as we're looking at it. You'll spot a small module with green, orange, and white wires going into it. That's our target. There are two tiny screws holding it down. Use your number zero screwdriver to loosen them, but don't take them all the way out at once. What I usually do is loosen them almost fully, 
then grab them with tweezers so that they don't drop into the depths of the controller. Step seven is to mark the magnet and remove it. So before we do anything else, take your black marker and draw a little line on top of the transparent casing that holds the magnet. That's going to help when we're putting it back together later. Use your tweezers to gently pull the whole casing out. It should come out sideways first and then up. And now have a look at the magnet itself. You'll notice that it isn't a perfect circle, it's got a flat edge at the bottom. Make a second mark with your black marker pen on the visible side of the magnet. This is really important because we're going to flip the magnet 180 degrees and we need to know which side was originally facing out the way. Now, we need to get the magnet out of the casing, which can be a bit of a battle. So if you warm it up using your hair dryer or your heat gun for about 30 to 60 seconds, that will soften the plastic that surrounds the magnet just enough. Then you want to use your long nose pliers to grip the edge of the magnet and ease it out. It does take a bit of patience and a bit of finesse, but it will come free if it's been warmed up properly. I haven't filmed this section because it is so fiddly, but please persevere with it because I promise you the magnet will come out. Once the magnet is removed from its casing, give it a half turn. So flip it so that the pen mark that you made earlier is now on the inside of the casing and make sure that the flat edge stays along the bottom. Step eight is to put the magnet back where it came from. Now gently place the magnet back into the controller using the black line on the plastic casing that you made at the start to help line it up. There's a tiny cylindrical peg that fits into a black plastic slot. It probably won't go in perfect the first time, but you can nudge it in with your tweezers and make sure it feels snug. If you've got it right, the line that you drew earlier should be dead center and you'll see the casing move when you wiggle the section where the stick usually goes. If the black line isn't lined up perfectly in the center, it's going to throw off your calibration later on, so use your tweezers to adjust it if it's not lined up. Step 9 is to secure the clip and the screws. Line up the wiring clip by hand and then fine tune it with your tweezers and then gently drop the screws back into place and tighten them up with your number zero screwdriver. Step 10 is calibration. This is where you find out if everything that you've done so far is working. So screw your sticks back in, connect the controller to your drone and go through the calibration process. You're looking to get a clean 100% on each axis. If you're not hitting that on any of the axis, it probably means that the magnet's slightly off or the clip wasn't seated properly. So double check that and try again if needed. It's worth the time now to get it spot on before you put the controller back together. Step 11 is making sure that you close everything back up. So once your calibration looks good, you can start reassembling the controller. Clip the two halves of the shell back together, screw the four grip screws back in, and then press the rubber grips into their slots.
Step 12 is to fit the top cover again. So pop the plastic top panel back on and it should clip neatly into place nice and easily. And step 13 is the last step. It's to slot those rubber stick holders back in. So again, they can be just as stubborn to get back in as they were to get out, but with a bit of patience, you'll get them in just fine. And that's it. If you've done your calibration, then everything should be working fine. If you found this helpful or you run into any issues, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching.